Hello friends, today I'll talk about how to set up the DB2 pacemaker on rail 8.1. I'll be using DB2 11.5.5 and the pacemaker is available from DB2 11.5.4. It was in technical preview in 11.5.4 and I believe it has been ready for the production in 11.5.5 and I would like to say thanks to Shrikant who has provided with me with the steps on how to set up. If it was not for Shrikant, I would have not been able to make this video. Thank you Shrikant. Yeah. So let's begin. So what are the steps involved? High level, I'll just cover the steps. We need to install DB2. So I have already done this. I have installed DB2 on node 1 and node 2. So let me show it to you. So I've got this 11.5.5 so I have installed the DB2 on DB2 11.5.5 on node 1 and node 2. I have two nodes DB1 and DB2 that's that's the host name the DB1 and DB2 is the host name so I got two nodes. I already have created a DB2 instance called DBP on both DB1 and DB2 so if I do DB2 I list you'll find one instance so I've done this on both the nodes. So there is an instance called DBP and then I have already created an HADR database. I have already set up an HADR between DB1 and DB2 and the database name is called DBHADR. So if I run this particular script, you will find that I have got a database called HADR. Okay, I have not shown you the database name. So if I say you db 2 pd minus db uh, db hadr minus hadr and if I do grep hadr you will find that the database name is db hadr it is on node 1 it is currently standby and on node 2 it is and it is peer connected so let me do one thing so let me take it over as primary so let me take over take over db db hadr Okay, take over HADR on db db HADR. Yeah, so that's done. So let me show you the role now. So that's primary or I can run this particular script to show that I, I am currently primary PR connected. So that's already done. Then make sure that HADR peer window is set to minimum 60 seconds. So if I show you that get db config for db hadr grep hadr you will find that hadr peer window make sure that it is non-zero value i have set to 60 so make sure that you set it to, to non-zero so hadr peer window may i have set to minimum 60 uh, this one set up the passwordless sh between root and instance owner so if you see the host if i show it to you ssh db Two, it is able to go there on the node 2 so from db1 I went to db2 without password so make sure you set up the SSH for root and for your instance owner at the SSH password less this one then you need to install the pacemaker software then you need to create the cluster and add the instance and database resources and then install packages on third host for the quorum and we'll configure the quorum what I've done is till here I have done everything and this is what I'm going to show it to you. So this till this I'm, I have done everything but what I will also do is I'll show you how to install the pacemaker software. So till this this is very common this is this particular requirement is there even for TSA so I don't want to touch this you everybody knows how to set up an HADR database everybody knows how to create an instance and everybody knows how to install db2 so i would not cover this what i would cover in this is how to install pacemaker software then how to create a cluster and how to configure the quorum so this is what i will be covering in this system. so as i said i am using rail 8.1 version db2 version is 11.5.5 i got two hosts called db1 and db2 which are which on here I have got primary and here I have got standby and the third host called db3 is for QNET. 
the instance name is called dbp and my database name is called dbhadr so that's my setup so you need to install some of the mandatory packages so these are the mandatory packages bin utility cpp dnf gcc ksh and all of these are mandatory packages i got this twice so let me remove this so these are the mandatory packages i have already installed them so these are the mandatory rpms or the packages that you will have to install now this is the main part so first thing that you need to do is you need to install this particular epil apple release i don't know what how you spell it apple epil whatever it is so you need to install this particular apple release and then you have to untar the the db2 pacemaker software currently the db2 pacemaker software is a separate binary that you have to download from ibm make sure you use the db2 pacemaker software you don't use the red red hat pacemaker you need to install the db2 pacemaker so you make sure that you install or you download the db2 pacemaker so why i got my dates messed up yeah and then what you need to do is you need to go to the rpms directory once you untar this you will find one directory called rpm and then you have to do dnf install this one so let me let me show it to you so what i have done is i have let me go to this particular so i have already untarred this this particular this one i have already untarred it so let me go to this once you untar you will let me go to that and this has to be done by root so let me log in as root and go here okay not here uh, sorry not here okay why did i have this messed up so let's drive d slash vm softwares okay and under this you will find this pacemaker so right i got this so under this i got this so let me go under this and under this you will find these two directories all that we need to do is we just have to run this command once you untar this you will find these directories all that you do is you just install this i have already done this so uh okay so i've already done it uh the reason why i got this is because right now i don't have the internet connectivity so i got this issue but yeah so i have already done this and i have already installed this particular packages so i got everything installed so once you install these packages you verify that you have those packages using this rpm q command which queries the rpm so these are the three packages so you will make sure that those are installed so if you see now let me clear the screen and if you see i got corosync i got pacemaker and i got this so i got all these packages and make sure that this is also been installed on the second node so if i do hit here and you can see that i got this corosync and pacemaker and crm assets so you make sure that these packages are installed which and this particular packages will be installed as part of this command so this command and this particular command basically installs everything which is present if i if i show you it whatever you untarred from ibm under that you will find a directory called rpms and in that directory you just have to run this dnf install command and once that particular command is installed then you will find the the this three packages got installed which you have verified just now next thing that you need to make sure that you set up the etc host to have the ips of all the servers so this one this don't bother about all of this so just concentrate on this so i have set up this three host the full name is this while the short name is this so i got 1.101 102 and 103 for host 1 2 and 3 so same thing you do on all the three nodes the first node so that they can connect so if i do if i say ping db2 you uh, clear ping db2 you can see that it is going to the second host because ips have already been set so you make sure that you have this entry in your etc host 
this we have already done the hdr setup that hdr is currently up and running so if i just show you it is currently up and running and it is currently the node 2 or db2 is in standby while the db1 is in the primary the next thing that you need to do is you need to disable the fault fault uh, monitor db2 fault monitor which i have already done the way you do it is like you go to the instance home directory under the instance home directory you will find a directory called bin under that you will find this and you just run this so if i just run this particular thing then yeah so the reason why it failed because it was already been done so i don't have it running so if i show you my fault monitor is not running here and it is not running on node 2 either so you see it's not running the next thing that we need to do is this db2 cm utility we have to copy to the sql lib instance home directory adm so that's what we have to do which i have already done again but the command would be you go to that particular software so if i go here and under this you will find a directory called db2 and under this you will find one file called db2 cm copy this particular utility under the sql lib instance home directory adm so if i show you there let me clear the screen again go to that particular directory and if i say ls minus l db2 cm you'll find that i have already copied that right so from where i got that again let me show you that particular file was present in the extract so if i go here under you okay so if i go here and if i show you the directory under this you will find one folder called db2 under this you will find a file called db2 cm copy that to instance home directory adm directory so you copy that and once you copy you change the permission which i have again done there is no harm in doing it again so i can do it again but anyway this has to be done by root so let me do it as a root so that's done then we need to copy the resource agents from the this using the db2cm command so using the db2cm command we have to copy the resources so under this particular directory you will find another directory called db2 agent so if i show you here db2 agents and sorry okay so where was i okay so i think i okay yeah i should come back and then if i do this you will find that these are the db2 resources we need to copy those to node 1 and node 2 as well which again i have done there is no harm in doing it again so i can do it one more time so that's done so if you see resources copied from this to this so i have to do it on both the nodes so i can do it here as well so that's done now once that has been copied you verify those utilities have been copied using this particular command called ls minus al so let's do that and you can see and all those resources have been copied so db2 db2 atmon db2 hdr and db2 this one and here also they are copied so on node 1 and node 2 so you verify them using this particular command and then okay so now the part where we create the cluster so let me just go through this what we have done so literally we have not done anything actually i just was talking something so what we have done is we have installed this mandatory packages these are the red hat packages nothing to do with your uh, uh, these are os packages nothing to do with your db2 once this all the packages are been done we install the apple release using this particular command then we extracted the pacemaker uh, binary this is not this particular package is at not available as part of your db2 so let me highlight it it you have to download it separately from ibm's website once you download this you, you extract it under that you will find a directory called rpms uh, where is it so yeah so if i show you under this you will find a directory called rpms and under this you will have two one is no arc and x86 four and what all that you had to do is you had to 
run this particular command which will install all the packages and when you have done with this your pacemaker software is installed now the next step is what you do is you verify that your pacemaker packages have been installed using this particular so you verify corrosing pacemaker and CRM message so you make sure that these packages are installed you keep you add an entry for all the host in your uh, etc host file on all the servers so for host 1 host 2 you keep the entry these are the public ips so these are pingable from outside so you make sure then the hadr i have already as i told uh, why what is this command okay so uh, as i said hadr is already been set up so i can show it to you it's already been set up or i can run this uh, sudo su okay let me go to the primary sudo su minus dbp and if i run this you will find that my hadr is primary peer connected so hadr is already up and running so next thing that we did is we disabled the fault db2 fault monitor so just make sure that db2 fault monitor is not up and running and then what we did is the db2 cm utility which was again present in your your install there was okay let me go there once again the reason why i'm doing this is i just want you to understand because this is a new thing it is a new thing for me if i go here this is extract package under this extract package you will find a directory called db2 under this you will find a file called or an executable called db2 cm you will copy that under the instance home directory adm so that's already been done and then you will change the permission then you will copy the resource agent scripts uh, from again they are present in your installation so if i go back here again and show it to you let me clear the screen and here you see this the resource agent scripts and we will be copying these particular scripts on the both the nodes so we copy these particular scripts on the both the nodes so we copy this resource agent scripts on both the nodes so to do that use the db2cm copy resources command and then you specify which host you want to copy so you do this on both the nodes and once that is done you verify that that has been done so that command would be i did not copy that command so let me copy it you verify using this ls minus a all command you verify that you have copied all the resources and then once you have done that now it is time to actually turn the action or create our cluster so till now it was all story it was all set up we have not created the cluster and now we are going to create the cluster so what is this ENP S08 that's your public IP here this is the host DB1 and this is the host DB2 so I'm creating a cluster on DB1 and DB2 using the public Ethernet which is this one and from where I got this so let me show it to you from where I got that clear the screen and if I do IF config and you will find this name called this one and this is my public IP this okay this is my public IP so I'm using this particular name the Ethernet name uh, the device name you can call it so I'm using this particular name here in this particular command the public IP so I'm telling that I'm going to create a domain or a cluster domain with a domain name called HA domain with this host called DB1 with the public IP public Ethernet device of this and host DB2 and this and if this command gets successful will be rocking if it is not then i'll have to go back and see what went wrong so let's do that okay so i'm here and under this there is a directory there is a file called db2cm that i will be using to create the cluster so let me run this particular command And let's see whether it gets created let's give it a minute it 
it's doing something i cannot see any output as i said if if we are lucky it will get created if we are unlucky or if i am unlucky i have to go back and fix this and come back create it looks like it is doing what it's supposed to do just give it a minute and created cluster created successfully so looks like our cluster has been created successfully so what we did we used this particular command to create a cluster with this particular name ha domain i said i want to add host db1 with public ethernet this and with host db2 with public ethernet this and then i created my cluster successfully so that's done next step is we will be adding the instance resource model on both the, okay why do i have this so i will be adding again i am in the same directory so i will not do it and i will be using the same cluster manager tool to create the instance or create instance resource model on one and two and i don't have to do it like this particular steps you have to do only once from any node so you have to do it either from the primary or the secondary i'm doing it from the primary so let's do that okay and again this all the commands has to be run as a root so i means i'm currently as a root so okay so i don't need to do that so i'm already there so let me fire both of these commands together so i'm adding the instance resource for the host db1 into the cluster and i will be adding the host resource instance resource on host db2 into the cluster so if this goes fine then our instance resource is added to the cluster okay so that looks good i guess it's created okay instance resource for dbp so this is the instance name on db1 got created successfully and right now it is adding for db2 so now we are adding the the instance resource okay so that looks good so we created that as well so three commands till now the first one was to create the cluster the second was to create the instance resource model on the first host and the second host the same instance i used so we we added this particular instance into the cluster then the next step is to add the database into the cluster so now we are going to add so in this we are saying for this particular database on this particular instance please add that resource hdr resource into the cluster so that's what we are going to do so that would be one of the final commands and again that command has to be run as a root so and this command will take some time because it's going to configure our database so let's give it a minute i'll not pause the video so if you are lucky again this would get successful if you are un if i am unlucky i'll have to go back just give it a minute you can fast forward it i can't fast forward it database resource for dbhdr created successfully so everything looks good so we got cluster created successfully the instance on the instance dbp on db1 successfully instance dbp on db2 successfully and the so till now four commands that we have fired and we are rocking because that's done actually so whatever cluster that we were supposed to create that's done let's see the status of our cluster so the command would be crm status to see the command and you see online db1 and db2 and the masters db1 is currently the master slave is db2 and everything is started and this is our database db hdr so we got everything and as i said 
we have to do this from only one node so if i run this command from the second node so currently okay let me do this so right now i am on db1 so i'm on my first node or the primary node and this is my second node u okay so this is my db2 and if i run this particular command from this second node you will see that everything is as good so whatever i did from node 1 has been replicated or uh, all those commands even got affected on the node 2 so that's done so now what we need to do is actually we can start doing our testing like killing the resources but what i'll do is i will also set up the quorum device so the next part would be to set up the quorum device and then what we need to do on the quorum device is we only need to install these two packages again where those packages are there those packages are in the same directory so if i go to that particular directory under this particular directory you will find these two packages we just need to install two of these packages so again on the okay so if i go here and you again you have to install the apple release on the third node and only these two packages we need to install on the column we don't have to install the entire pacemaker which again i have done and then you have to fire this particular command from your primary server using the root so let me show it to you so if i go here under this under rpms you will find these two packages and all that you have to do is this so let me take this and it will tell that i have already installed it okay okay so file not found by blah 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 blah, blah. okay so actually why okay so okay all right i'm not under the yeah so if you can see okay actually yeah qnet where is that qnet 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 yeah so that's the this these are the two packages qnet and qnet debug info so those are the two packages that we need to install on our third node the quorum node and then from the primary we just hit this particular command so let me do that and what we are saying is create the quorum device on our third node so let's do that and let's see if our quorum is set up so, and once we set up that we will be verifying if the quorum is set up using this too we can check from the primary using this command and if you want to check from this so why okay so So quorum device added successfully so let's now check so if you can see we got the quorum information q device and we can run the same command from node 3 which is the quorum so the command from quorum is different so here we will be running this particular command okay 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 yeah so i had this dash problem so this is the command and you, you can see that it has got two nodes and it picked up the ip 102 and 101 these are the two devices which are currently under the quorum or under the cluster so and the cluster name is ha domain so on so basically the steps on your quorum is pretty simple you just install these two packages and then from the cluster you run this particular command and then you can verify the quorum device using corrosing q device tool or corrosing qnet q device from the primary or standby and qnet from your quorum host now our cluster has been set up and what is the use if we are not able to prove that the cluster is working fine so what we will do is let's do this so okay so let me let me show it to you okay let me show it to you from here so everything is looking good so let me clear the screen and everything is looking good 
and PS minus EF grab DB2 CC and that's our process kill minus 9 and the DB2 CC process and let's do that and the DB2 CC process is no longer there 19087 that process is no longer there let's see what happened here okay so we got some errors failed okay so this one failed hmm, not not good not good definitely not good so now let's see what happened okay so i have some issues so let me start this again and close this okay and then this one was killed this particular thing was killed so let's see if it came back again oh I did not start it and automatically it came and let's see what is our let me clear the screen what's our cluster status and it has started so looks like this one is started okay so let me run CRM status okay so not running not running but let's give it a minute and all the errors are gone okay so the db2 is already started again so the i killed the instance and the cluster db2 cluster manager or pacemaker started the instance automatically now what we'll do is let's actually verify the database so let's go to our database I'm going as an instance owner and let me run the HDR get status and it is primary peer connected so not only it actually started the instance it also activated my database and the database was connected in the standby as primary because this was a primary so looks like if I kill the instance the the pacemaker software is able to bring up the instance bring up the database and set up the HDR link and its HDR is connected right now. So that's a good news. That's really good news. So pacemaker is working. Now the next test and what are we going to do here is I'm going to shut down the primary node. I'm going to shut down the primary itself. So let me do that. So this is my primary. I now I'm okay. Okay. So I'm going to shut it down. So let me do something. I can't fire the command. Let me try to do the duplicate session and it's not pingable anymore. And let's do from here ping db1. That's not pinging because it's shut down right now. So let's see what is happening with our. Okay, let's go to the standby. This was our standby. Let's see what happens here. So CRM status. Okay, so it looks like the master is now DB2 and DB1 has gone offline because I killed it. That was our primary. I killed it. And now it says master is DB2. So let's see what is what's what has happened with our database. So let's go to our instance sudo su minus dbp and let's see what's happened with our database Ooh, on our see if you see here my db1 was primary now my db2 is primary hra state is disconnected obviously because the node one has been shut down so the hra state is disconnected but if you see the role has got switched over and my standby node became primary if you see here let me do this ah, don't don't do this don't do this okay yeah so okay so host not reachable host not reachable i know that it's not reachable so let's not do that yeah so where where, where am i where am i okay so i want to want to close this yeah and this is yeah so if you can see this was my db1 and this is my db2 and 
I can show you that this was this is primary and this is primary now this was peer connected this was on host one and when I shut down obviously if you can see it's the shutdown the primary okay so uh, clear so it's not reaching so I shut down my primary and when I shut down my primary automatically the role switch over happened and my standby became primary so now what I'm going to do and this is my final test is I'm going to bring up my DB1 so the DB1 which was initially primary let's see what happens to it whether it goes into split brain split brain mode uh, or it goes it gets converted the primary gets converted to standby so let's do that so let me start my virtual box and the powered off machine I'm going to start it and I'm not going to do anything I'm just going to power it on and I'm going to wait from this till it comes online so it's pinging not reachable not reachable it's going to take some time for it to boot up so let's give it a minute it's not reachable I'll, I'll get a lot of messages so let's do this not reachable not reachable as of now still not booting it's, it's booting it's still not booted fully uh, okay let's give it a minute okay so the ping starts appearing so looks like it is the network devices are up and running so I'm going to wait let's see whether my HDR is up and running primary is still disconnected disconnected so now it's still okay that's okay so this was the DB1 was primary so let's see what happens so let me try to connect to DB1 I will not close this putty session so let me do new session try if I'm able to log into okay I am able to log in okay so let me do let me see if my DB2 CC process came up ah the db2 cc process has come up on db1 the host that i was originally primary which which was shut down now let's do this and see what happens ah primary disconnected disconnected primary peer connected did i do something i just restarted the node and the hadr okay time to actually really check whether this got converted as a standby so let me go as the as the instance user and run this particular command and let's see and it is standby peer connected and if i show you this particular screen initially when i forcefully powered it off that time it was primary peer connected and now it is standby peer connected the host db1 if you can see host db1 so if we kill the instance the instance is automatically brought up the database is brought up and the hdr pair is established if i shut down the primary if i forcefully power off the primary the standby becomes the primary and it remains in disconnected state because it cannot connect to the primary and if I boot the old primary, if I power up the old primary, the old primary will come up. It will, the instance will start. It will become standby and the HADR pair will be activated. I believe this is a brilliant solution. This is, I, I have not seen the issues that were there in TSA. It works flawlessly. The reason behind this is the pacemaker is an HA solution by Linux open it is open source Linux it's been there for I don't know how long but it's been there for so long it's it's a really powerful it's been used by Red Hat and Suze it's a very powerful software and I can also tell you that the SQL server on Microsoft SQL server on Linux if you want to do the clustering if you want to set up the cluster on for the SQL server on Linux you have to use the pacemaker so the pacemaker is very powerful software it is been there and it does not have the issues that your TSA has and I suggest you know go start learning the pacemaker because eventually the TSA is going to go and 
the pacemaker is the future not only for the t the tsa automation even for the pure scale the pure scale will be based on the pacemaker they will be removing the tsa from the pacemaker it is not going to happen today or tomorrow it's going to take some time but that's the future and if you want to be ready for the future the pacemaker for db2 is the future i can i can go over this document once again but i believe you have guy i have done it two times but let me as i always do let me just repeat it for so that you can see what i have done so i installed db2 on node 1 db and node 2 that's was already been done i already created an instance called dbp on primary on and the second standby i set up an hdr database called db hdr i made sure that hdr peer window is 60 i set up the passwordless sss for root and instance owner and install pacemaker software the reason why i did not cover this entire thing in the video is because it's going to take a long time if i start recording everything and these are the general steps you i do not believe that you need to okay the install pacemaker software is not a general step but that's again it's really simple uh, which i will show it to you so you need to install some of the packages uh, and then you need to install this particular apple release and then you have to extract this tar file from from the ibm website that you get and then you need to go to this rpms and then you need to install the uh, using the dnf once you install you make sure that all these packages are installed and then you make sure you you edit your etc host you verify your hdr that it is working you disable your fault monitor and then you copy the db2 cm utility from your this extracted file into the sql lib adm of the instance home then you copy the resource agent scripts again they are from this extract under the db2 agents so you copy this then you verify that that's all done and then in reality to create the cluster it's only four commands you create the cluster you add the resource instance resources you add the database resources one two three and four and that's and once you are done with this your cluster is set and then you can verify your cluster and if you want to configure the q device quorum then you need to again have a third host and in that third host you only need to install these two packages and then from your primary you need to run this particular command and then you verify your quorum using this and what we did for the testing is we killed the primary when we killed the primary automatically the primary came up and i forcefully shut down the primary and when i shut down the primary automatically the old the old standby became the new primary and when i put up the old primary then it became the new standby and if you want to delete the cluster this is the command to delete the cluster i hope this particular tutorial was useful and again thanks for watching and see you in next video and special thanks to srikant for sharing me the steps on how to set up the pacemaker thank you